Welcome back to F1 2016 here guys, it is Psycho Enigma and we are back for round number 8 of the 2017 season. We're in Baku, I don't need to repeat myself, it's the worst track in the world, but I did it anyway. Um, we're here, power track, we know, big, big old straights with a McLaren Honda, so I think, I think we all know where this is going. It's not going to be a good weekend for us. Um, honestly, I don't really think it's going to be going anywhere too well at all. Um, so it's a bit awkward with this one because our internal combustion engines, you know, we've already worn two out, so we need to run the third one. Uh, normally, I would just run um, some worn parts, but realizing how bad it's going to be for us this weekend, um, we're going to be 19th or 20th anyway, so I decided to take a fresh power unit. Um, I would have taken more um, I would have done like a full Lewis Hamilton in Belgium 2016 and just gone run one session and get a spare power unit. But once you take a power unit for a weekend, um, you then can't add another one. Um, but I also did a gearbox as well. So that, I think I've worked it out as to like 65 place grid penalty. Um, it's something like that. And now we can see we're going into, into practice here. Um, it was a wet practice session. So, I took the opportunity of realising that if it's a wet practice session, I'll be able to get 50 resource points easier for like the, the wear test where they don't expect the car to be going so quickly. Um, so, you know, at least we were able to get some good points um, from Baku. That's that's the benefit that I'm seeing here. I was actually able to, to get 50 resource points. Look at this one on the fuel management, just eking it out there. Um, the car's good in intermediate conditions though. Like, I really enjoy this car in intermediates because of the chassis and the aero and how good that is. It's an excellent car to drive. It, re it really is. Like, that's... That's the sad part about this McLaren Honda. It's such a joy to drive. The only issue we had came in the qualifying pace program. Uh, you can see me here. This is right at the end of session one, so you'd expect me in drier conditions. I mean, it's damp, some spray coming off the track, but... You'd expect me to be able to, to get it close to the objective, um, but as you can see, I'm 2.6 seconds down. I'd like to point out, this is a completely fresh power unit, and I was pushing the car and pushing the car, um, and as we come into this corner, maybe pushing it a bit too much, got on the power just a bit too early, and well, that was that was the end of practice one. like you've got a bit of rivalry going on out there this is good it gets people talking about you just make sure you outperform them okay due to the fact we beat fernando alonso in our last rivalry we have a new rival in pascal verline as i always say it's between the mclarens and the salvers to fight for the wooden spoon uh, every race weekend um, and i feel like we've been doing the job there so hopefully we can beat pascal and move on to another rival in maybe like i don't know one of the toro rossos or the renos for us to be able to compete with there um 702 resource points um so it's now in the aspect of how we can look to develop the car further we have a third power train upgrade coming um and i will point out this race was recorded before it was known about the mclaren honda um bug with regards to engine upgrades so it's it's a bit of pill to swallow. This and the next two were recorded before knowing about that. But you can see here I'm looking at the tree in regards to durability about the internal combustion engine to help me get that major upgrade um, in regards to powertrain. And of course the uh, internal combustion engine is the part that we are wearing out the most. So uh, I finally did some dry running in Q1 and you can see we were a second off Alonso. Jeff trying to put a positive spin on things. It's a one-stop around Azerbaijan, so nothing special. Um, we were going to be last anyway. I just did a lap to see how uncompetitive we were. Uh, it turns out very. It turns out very uncompetitive. Um, and I hate to sound so demotivated, but honestly, it's just such a bad track. And I mean, like, I, I didn't expect to be having fun this weekend anyway, being in the McLaren Honda and its incredible lack of straight-line speed. Um, but especially after, like, I, I did this race... Um, before knowing about the bug, and then when it came to editing it, knowing about the bug just crushed me even more. So, uh, but at the end of the day, we're now pulling up and building to those five red lights are on, lights are out, and away we go for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Trying to charge towards turn one, make up any uh, positions that we can off the line um, in the usual dive down the inside, fight with the Salvers and the McLaren to try and get any positions that we can. We've managed to get past Fairline and Alonso, and we're going to take Ericsson down the inside of Verstappen running down really low, so let's try and get ahead of him if we can. That'll be a bonus, but no, Verstappen out-tractions us 
And well, there he goes. But we're going to duck into the slipstream as we head towards turn three now. This is basically all of uh, the first sector. It's just 90 degree left and right hand as we come down towards. We're going to look down the inside of a staff. And once again, can we get through on the inside? No, we can't. We're running the soft tyre at the start of this since we faster at the end, but we now build towards the inside of Verstappen. Once again, try and fight him through these 90 degree handers, right handers, but he's got better traction on the soft tyre. We go to the inside of the next corner as we charge it through. We're through on Verstappen. We hold it round the outside just about as we now head towards the second uh, sector of the lap. Verstappen is on our right hand side. Is he going to try and have a go into this hairpin? We're going to go side by side once again, just avoiding the wall. As we now head towards the castle section, Verstappen is on the outside. We're down the inside cut the corner a little bit Verstappen I'm not too sure what happened there but there's a yellow flag from behind and it looks as if he's dropping back so I'm not too sure as Verstappen went on the outside here's a replay and we can try and see what happened so as we go in Verstappen just gives no quarter and he goes straight into the wall as well as one of the Salbers and that's clearly not worked out for Verstappen he should have realized that I had the inside line it was going to be completely unavoidable for him to go into the wall but lap three now we're in the, the best position we could hope for, 16th place. We're, we're holding on to the back of Danny Kvyat quite well, realistically. Um, and we've got a good old gap to the Salvas and uh, Fernando Alonso behind. So, realistically, we're, we're doing the job that we need to be doing. Um, but now it comes to the to the back straight and we're we're in rich mix. We're trying to get as close as we can to Kvyat as possible. We might be getting the dregs of Slipstream. The DRS is open this lap and a breakthrough moment is about to occur. As you're going to see it, the McHonda breaks... 200 miles an hour in a straight line we set a personal best we break and then Danny Kvyat put me off a little bit really he kind of went to the inside and then pulled off um, and Danny Kvyat is out of the Grand Prix I can only assume due to the the nature of his retirement and how he handled it that must have been some kind of electronic failure um, but then you know the the top runners are now running the two stops so now these are the, that will be when these guys are coming out you can see Hamilton's just behind me so he's going to be running the two-stop strategy today. Everyone else lower will be the one. Um, there's going to be not much point in fighting him due to the fact he has such a superior engine. But to keep my own sanity, I decided, eh, you know, we'll see. It depends on how close he gets. And he does get pretty close as we come to the next left-hander. But even he decides against a lunge down the inside there. As we're going to go on to the very next lap, Hamilton's going to look to position to move into the hairpin. Same as Max Verstappen did. He's got completely locked up, though, on his outside front. We're trying to hold it around the outside. Hamilton side by side again as we go up to the castle section. It's a mirror move of lap one, and Hamilton sends himself into the wall, doing exactly the same thing that Max Verstappen did. The AI, like, I was ahead going into the corner and the inside line. A bit of tweaking on the AI may be needed there to actually give up the position, because that's... They're just going to keep running themselves into the wall. And we're now on lap 8 and we've got the Williams of Felipe Massa up behind me in the slipstream. Low drag Mercedes set up and this, this is just ridiculous. He's going to go straight past us and I've only got a few words I can say about this one here. Embarrassing. Really embarrassing. I never raced with less power in my life. How is what's So our resident Honda spokesman Fernando Alonso clearly not too impressed. Um, clearly having the same issues that I am um, in regards to this weekend as the low drag Williams clearly able to jump ahead of us of Felipe Massa and you see him drive ahead into the distance but I've realised that we find ourselves in 11th position and you'd think at this point it's looking fairly good for us you know especially around the castle section the car felt fantastic through there um, and we now find ourselves in 10th as the guys around us are pitting um, Pascal Wehrlein I must admit once he got past Ericsson and Alonso, he was really surprisingly quick. Um, like, to the point in which it's... I think the rivals get the, the buff that they used to get in the older F1 games. Like, where you'd get a rival near the end of the championship. So I'm assuming the rivals do get some kind of performance buff. Uh, anyway, Pascal pulls into the pits at the end of lap 11. He's going to fit the soft tyres to go to the end. We're going to go a few more laps. And we're, of course, going to fit the super soft to try and run to the end of the race. We're now up into 7th, oddly enough. Um... But obviously, we are going to look to lose those paces as we now move on to everyone's favourite. It's the montage of misery as cars around us have just... Look at this. Grosjean flies past us. We try and get some slipstream there. Magnussen goes past us. Those Haas cars are so quick in a straight line. They've just absolutely done me well before turn one. Uh, I've already done the sound bite, so I can't really do it again. But yeah, got completely done by the Haas drivers. Science is doing an absolute worldie for Toro Rosso there. And we're going to get it the very next lap where we've got a Mercedes-powered Force India. is just going to go flying past us. 
down the straight, and even the Renault powered car, just just for sheer jokes. Uh, there's another one for you. It's just, it, it got beyond funny at this point. We're going to try and hold it around the outside of Jolie and Palmer if we can, but we've braked far too late going into turn one, and that's uh, going to drop us down into 12th place. The only other guy we've got behind is Lance Stroll on the medium tyre. Um, and it's now at the point where Stroll has got past us and Palmer. But now we've got Lewis Hamilton fighting his way back through the field. Still trying to uh, get past me on the inside there. He had to go medium. Still he wanted to stick to his two-stop and go to the end of the race. Um, but we've obviously been, been falling down the field. Um, and obviously Pascal Wehrlein, who we are pretty much racing in this Grand Prix, is now going to be the guy that we're racing. As Hamilton, look, just drives completely past us. Um, it's just a joke. It honestly is, and I need these upgrades to actually start working for the Maconda sooner rather than later. But we're going to come in at the end of lap 15 um, to fit the super soft tyre, and it all now depends on how much Pascal has caught up to us. I think that even might be him on the mini map now, as yep, he goes through. That's Pascal, and I think that's Ed Verstappen, so I don't know if he's fighting with him for whatever reason. I know it sounds like the Red Bulls are also having a disaster weekend. Um, we didn't pull away well from our pit stop either. So we're now down into 17th, and uh, we're ahead of Ericsson and Alonso. So, I mean, yep. It's it's now down to can we close the gap to Pascal Wehrlein um, as we now on lap 16. We're going to come up to the split point now. This was pretty much the only motivation I had for the rest of the race. As we cross the split point, we have 10 laps to the end, and it's 11.6 seconds to the Sauber driver. You can see now by lap 20, the gap was down to 6 seconds to Hulkenberg, who for some reason has fallen back behind Pascal Wehrlein. But he's close to him. I did some really good laps. And once again, the car felt okay to drive, especially through the castle section. It's just slow on the straights. Um, you can see now, this is the lowest I got to the gap, around five and a half seconds with a few laps to go. But it was around this point that I realised that it was all in vain because um, the gap just didn't get any smaller. The very next lap, which I feel like was one of my best driven ones, even though it 1.2 off the pace, we got two tenths of a second. And that's the point where my spirit got broken. Um, realised I wasn't going to catch the Salva in the end, so um, yeah, just sort of brought, brought it home at the end there. Um, tried to lift and coast, save the engine, save the tyres, but yeah, disappointing one as we're going to come across the line. It's only 16th place. And as we can see, it's time for the podium. And as the drivers make their way out, there's a familiar red suit making its way to the top step. Fantastic win for Ferrari. So there it is, um, Roman Grosjean in the end, fourth place for Haas, he did really well fighting through the field, um, Hamilton in the end managed to get sixth, so it goes to show the speed that even he had on the uh, on the medium tyre, um, we dropped to 12th in the driver's standings, we now match Danny Kvyat on points, um, so this, you know, this along with Canada was really uh, back to reality, as it were, unfortunately, for the Maconda. Um and I just need to hope that, that that patch... I think it's already been fixed on PC. Um, and that will mean that the 1.6 patch to console, which I, I do race on Xbox One, um, will be coming fairly soon. But like I say, I've already recorded Austria and Silverstone. Um, but we get our resource points. We are first driver, so we do get those bonuses. Um, and we start off with losing... Uh, at the moment, we're losing the rivalry to Pascal Wehrlein. Um, but... You know, we, we beat our session goal, so we're building up our reputation with all the teams. For some reason, Sauber dropping off there, but yeah, um, a weekend to forget, really. A weekend to forget. It's it, it's difficult when you're at, at such a power track and you've got the um, you've got the Honda engine, really. Um, not really, not really much else left to uh, left to say, but. Hopefully we can bounce back in Austria and Britain. I'm more positive about those tracks because our car, due to the way the aero and the chassis works, we are very good at sort of like high speed sweeping corners um, to which Austria and Silverstone, especially Silverstone, has quite a lot of those. So I'm looking forward to those rounds. I'm hoping that we're going to do well. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, I uh, want to forget for, uh, for this one. But guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you still did enjoy it. Leave a like if you did. Comment any feedback down below and subscribe. 
for future updates. I'll see you all next time.